Okay. Hey, today we're doing we're starting 5.7 systems of linear inequalities. I want you to look at page 162 of your student journal. Work on exploration one with your groupies, please. My shading up here isn't too hot, so let me shade it. I think that's shaded down here. Okay, so I fixed the shading on my picture. It should be fine in your book, though. Wait, that was shaded? Yeah, page one. Okay, exploration one. Which inequality does it go with? Yeah, this one goes with, this is inequality number one. Okay. The y-intercept is four. The x, or the slope is negative two. Okay, you could also think the y-intercept is 2 in it. That's another way of thinking about it. Excuse me, the x-intercept is 2. Okay, so no matter how you did it, if you change this to slope-intercept form and said y um, is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 4, that would be one way to think about it. Okay, or if you used x and y-intercepts. Okay, that means this is number 2. Okay, and for the same reasons, you can find the y-intercept and the slope here, or the x-intercept. x-intercept is zero, y-intercept is zero. Okay, what I want you to do now is I want you to put both of those on the same graph. All right, hey, so it says use two different colors, so I put both those graphs on there. Color. Change in slope-intercept form, and that is what I've got there. Oh, How many got that? That's not it. Okay, double check your work, and then I uh, make sure you answer these questions on page 163. Okay, page 163, describe the shaded regions on the graph. What does the unshaded region represent? That's part B, and then answer questions 1 through 5 there. Okay, don't worry about number 6 yet. Okay, 1 through 5. Yes, 3 through 5. Thanks for pointing that out. All right, so a couple of questions that have come up. First, on mine... I just have one shaded region. So I only shaded the overlapping region. Really, the this, this graph right here shades all the way down. It's just not overlapping down here. And then this one over here shades up. It's just not overlapping. The overlapping region, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that now. So it's a little, little clearer to see when I have all the shading in there. Okay, that is my overlapping region. Okay, the other ones have shading, it just doesn't have double shading. Okay, we like the double shading. So when you go back to your questions, that may help out um, for those of you that kind of erase some of the stuff. Okay, describe each of the shaded regions of the graph. What does the unshaded? Okay, so this region right here, what does it mean? Is that a solution? Uh, let's go ahead and raise our hand. I can't. Too many people. Kellen? Order pairs that aren't a solution to. To which one? Yeah, to either of them. Yeah, it's not a solution to either of them. Nice job there, Kellen. Okay, what does this region mean? Volunteer, please. Yeah? It's a solution to one, but not both. Good. It's a solution to one of the inequalities, but not both of them. So that is a solution to. This inequality right here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What does this region down here mean? Still? Good. The, anything down here is for this inequality, up above. And then the overlapping means what, Brian? It works, for both. works for both. Okay. And that's really what we're trying to do. When we're finding a solution to a system, we're finding the overlapping region, where it works for both of them. Okay. So... Number three, how can you graph a system of inequalities? Well, graph each inequality in the same plane and then find where they overlap. That's, that's what we're looking for is our solution. Number four, when graphing a system of linear inequalities, which region represents the solution of the system? The overlapping region. Okay. 
So we're always looking for that overlapping region. It'll help if you do two different colors. That sometimes helps, helps out a bit. Number three, do you think all systems will have a solution? When won't they? Yeah, parallel lines might not. Okay, it doesn't mean they always won't. Parallel lines that shade in opposite directions. Yeah, number five, I'm sorry. Question three on this page, but the third question on this page, but good call. Okay, parallel lines that shade in opposite directions do not have an overlapping region. So if you think about that, if you think of parallel lines like this, and one shading up above, and the other one shading down below, those don't overlap. Okay, that would be a no solution. All right, I want you to answer question number six. Give number six a go. You have it in your book, but the shaded region is right here. Why is left center equal to three and right center equal to two? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, is this line a Y or an X line? That's Y. How come? Only crosses the y-axis. Crosses at three, and we're shading below it, so we are going less than. Or equal to because it's solid. Good. Or equal to because it's solid. Well done. Okay, and this one right here is a x, and it's at two, and it's less than, and it's also a solid line. Okay, x is less than or equal to two. All right. Very good. So that is our system there. All right. Page 164 of your student journal kind of summarizes what we just talked about. It gives you opportunity if you want. You can do some definitions there. It might be a good way to review for your test later on. Um, your assignment today is going to be page 165 and 166 in your student journal. Okay? Off you go.